Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain Television. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa left the kingdom today heading to the United Kingdom. During the visit, His Majesty the King is expected to meet with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and Head of the Commonwealth, as well as United Kingdom Prime Minister Theresa May. The talks are due to focus on the long-standing solid relations bonding the two kingdoms and their friendly peoples, as well as the current situation in the region and the latest regional and international developments. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa offered his deepest condolences at Wajaba Palace in Doha to the Emir of Qatar. His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani on the passing of Qatari Emir Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad Al Thani. His Majesty also offered condolences to the sons of the deceased and to the Al Thani family, asking Allah Almighty to rest the deceased soul in eternal peace. His Majesty the King lauded the accomplishments of Sheikh Khalifa and his contribution to serving his country, the Arab and the Islamic nations, as well as his efforts in founding the GCC Council and its progression. The Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, and his father, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa, both expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his brotherly and noble feelings, which reflects the strong brotherly relations linking the two countries and their peoples. They wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, arrived earlier today at Doha International Airport and was received by the Prime Minister, Minister of Interior, Sheikh Abdullah bin Nasser bin Khalifa Al Thani and a number of officials. His Royal Highness expressed his deepest condolences to the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani and Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani. Al Thani family members and the people of Qatar following the passing of Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad Al Thani. The Crown Prince praised the late Emir's efforts and achievements in serving Qatar and all Arab and Islamic nations. His Royal Highness went on to highlight the contributions of the late Emir alongside regional leaders in establishing and developing the Gulf Cooperation Council. For their part, the Emir of Qatar, as well as Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, expressed their gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his kind visit during this difficult time.
The events of the joint naval drill, that's Causeway 17, continue with the participation of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force and the Eastern Fleet of Bahrain Royal Navy in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The forces participating in the drill began their military exercises to become fully prepared for the drill stages. The drill is an essential tool in enriching command structures and combat experience within the two countries' forces to accommodate the requirements of joint military action. It also upgrades combat readiness, the exchange of military skills, ways of enhancing joint coordination and achieving integration in joint naval operations. Throughout the drill, all procedures, combat operations and tasks were performed skillfully and in record times. The exercises were marked with compatibility and the spirit of unified joint action. His Highness First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at his Majlis Sin Rafah 70 athletes with disabilities in the presence of the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Bahrain Olympic Committee, Abdul Rahman Sadiq Askar. President of Bahrain Disabled Sports Federation, that's the BDSF, Sheikh Mohammed bin Daj Al Khalifa, and a number of the Federation's trainers and administrative council members. His Highness expressed pride in the achievements of the disabled players in various championships, noting their success in honouring the kingdom. He went on to convey the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, stating His Majesty's firm stance about the necessity of providing various forms of support to people with special needs through integration in all fields. His Highness also conveyed the greetings of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, noting his efforts in supporting disabled sports through creating programs that aim at achieving the directives of His Majesty the King in the field of youth and sports. He hailed the efforts of the BDSF in creating programs capable of improving disabled sports and contributing to enhancing the capabilities of the players, wishing the Federation further success. Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Al Mullah, today chaired the weekly meeting where the Council approved the Arab Convention for the transfer of inmates at penal and correctional institutions. The agreement between Bahrain and India for cooperation to combat terrorism, organized crime, and illegal trafficking of drugs and narcotics, psychotropic substances, and precursor chemicals, as well as the Arab Convention to combat cyber crime. The Council also reviewed letters from the government regarding financial disclosure and amended laws of establishing the National Institution for Human Rights. They also discussed granting reclamation land to housing projects and discussed a recommendation regarding assigning qualified Bahrainis as sign language teachers for the Ministry of Education. The Council then approved a cessation of singing and dancing events in respect to the current tragic situation in Yemen, Iraq and Syria. The Minister of Commerce and Industry and Tourism, Mr. Zayed bin Rashid Al Zani, stated that establishing strategic partnerships with neighbouring countries and people of expertise would only push the development process forward. This came during the first Arab European Conference organised by the Kingdom of Bahrain, in which Mr. Al Zani heads the Bahraini delegation participating in the events of the Euro MENA Conference on Public Management, held under the patronage of the Sultan of Oman, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said Al Said, from the 24th to the 27th of this month. This conference is organised by the Middle East and North Africa Public Administration Research Network in partnership with the European Group of Public Administration, that's EGPA, and ex Marseille University, the AMU. During the commencement of the conference, the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Tourism hailed the joint cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Oman, which signifies the keenness of both countries to benefit their people. The Director General of Bahrain Institute for Public Administration, Dr. Raed Ben Shams, stated that the Kingdom of Bahrain has made considerable leaps in the area of development of public administration and research support, making it a centre for scientific research in the Arab world today, and considering BIPA a regional think tank that works closely with public management institutes in the efforts of achieving further development.
Dr. Ben Shams also stated that this conference would work on providing a recourse database for the effective bodies on public administration to use as a guide for the process of decision and policy making that would significantly enhance government performance, especially considering the 250 participants from 16 countries internationally and regionally. The conference will also discuss updating the Human Recourses Administration as well as performance of the public organisations in addition to a number of topics of mutual concern. The United Nations team in Bahrain organised an event on Monday evening to commemorate the 71st anniversary of the founding of the UN Charter. More details in this report now with Mohammed al Shaban. The UN Day is celebrated all around the world to mark the founding of the United Nations in 1945. This year marks the international body's 71st anniversary. The Kingdom of Bahrain joined in the global occasion to celebrate the international achievements. Today marks a special day. It marks the uh, 71st anniversary of uh, the United Nations Charter. It also marks the uh, 45th anniversary of uh, Bahrain's membership of the United Nations organization. Uh, looking back at the previous year, uh, the 70th session, uh, there has been lots of achievements internationally. Uh, the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, the uh, signing of the uh, Climate Agreement in Paris. The highlight of the UN Day commemoration this year is the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, and the steps being taken to ensure their implementation. We would like, are very grateful for the government of Bahrain who is hosting the UN agency here and also contributing to its programs uh, to be able to focus, as we heard today, to reach the citizens. And uh, uh, we have developed uh, a strategic cooperation framework that aligns uh, all our interventions in Bahrain to the government plan and to the SDGs. Guests from different age groups and entities were in attendance. To them, the UN Day comes as a celebration of global collaboration in the name of achieving international goals that are built on a shared and unified vision. I would like to say uh, happy anniversary, 71st for United Nations. And uh, as we say, the United Nations is a very important part of the world. Okay, for the peace and uh, for all countries. But the UN is, I, I think it's really important in the world today. And I think it's really important that we celebrate it every year. And then it just puts more emphasis on uh, that we need world peace and that we need to work together to achieve that. And I think with the new uh, SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals uh, that we just got, okay, I think that's another step in the right direction. And here we are, celebrating 71 years of the founding of an agency that brought the world together in the name of peace and prosperity, and in a nation that aspires to achieve the goals and objectives of this world governing body. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain Television News. The second annual Bahrain Housing Conference and Exhibition opened today for a three-day run at the Bahrain International Exhibition Centre under the patronage of Minister for Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Aziani. It was organised by Exposure Media with the support of the Bahrain Property Development Association and the Ministry of Housing and brings together exhibitors from the design, construction, maintenance and management and residential technology areas. I'm glad to attend the Bahrain uh, Housing Conference and Exhibition. Uh, it's the second edition of the conference. Uh, there is an increase of around 35% of exhibitors. Around 60 exhibitors are, are here today uh, with more than 300 products and projects to, to showcase. I'm glad to see such uh, improvement and development in the uh, housing uh, sector. There are uh, different electronic materials or furnitures uh, that are made here in Bahrain. Uh, I was very proud to see uh, Bahraini products to be displayed and, uh, and, 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 and that are successful. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,143.47 points, marking a decrease of 5.08 points below yesterday's closing level. There was decreased trading in the commercial banks, investment and services sector, although the latter represented the majority 63% of total share value traded. 
In grand total today, there were 55 transactions comprising 3,475,525 shares worth 727,806 Bahraini dinars.